Welcome and greetings. Thanks for tuning in to KMRS, Quran Media Review Show, where we will be discussing movies, music, television, and comics. We're getting into movies today. So, transcendence. I seen this the other night with my wife, and, um, you know, it was one of those weird Johnny Depp movies, I guess, you know. Um, you know, I walked away from the theater just puzzled, like, you know, how the heck did he do all of that stuff? Like, you know, I mean, I get the fact that, you know, his consciousness survived based off of their experience um, and their experiment, but I just still didn't understand, like, how the heck was he able to, like, regenerate the earth and do all this crazy stuff inside of people's minds? Like, that still puzzled me. Um, you know, it was directed um, by Wally Pfister, um, and the writer was Jack Paglin. Um, so, interesting you know, take on the story. Um, I just, I just walked away just feeling kind of weird, I guess. But um, nonetheless, it was an interesting movie. Um, I'd love to hear Let's you guys. Let's talk about on that. something that is very dear to my heart. I absolutely love Boy Meets World, and if there's any other Boy Meets World fans out there, you should be just as excited as I am because there's this new show that's coming very soon called Girl Meets World, and it is scheduled to air June 27th, 2014. So, um, Girl Meets World, it's about, you know, we have Corey and, Cor and Topanga, they are coming back to the screen, and they are parents now. They are married, and they have a child, um, Riley. And so, now this show is, you know, we're definitely going to see them in, you know, their parenting role, but it's more so directed towards, you know, their daughter, Riley Matthews. Um, who's going to be taking on, you know, the main role, main character in this story. Um, and so, you know, I grew up watching the show. I have every season, me and my wife. Um, we're faithful, devoted to Boy Meets World. My question is, is this show going to have the same magic that Boy Meets World had? I mean, you look at Corey Matthews. I mean, it was just something about this this little kid that we were able to watch him grow up through all these different seasons. And it's just the magic that was in the show, um, in this, you know, kind of spark as a character, there was a magic, you know, that I feel like Corey Matthews was able to bring to, you know, the screen and to the show. And I'm really just interested to see if, you know, this main character, um, essentially, you know, Riley, will do the same thing where she will capture, you know, um, viewers' attention and the hearts, you know, of of the viewers, um, the same way the previous show did. So. I'm really interested to see, you know, how this this new um, this new step, you know, for them really goes. It looks amazing, and I'm excited. It looks like, you know, the the comedy and plus the moralistic uh, view that they bring in the show that still will be implemented, and I think that that's something that is very valued for this type of genre. Um, so, moving on to All other right, business, we're going to talk about comics now. Um, as I said before, and you know what, before we get into comics, I just want to say this. So last video, um, I talked about um, the picture Zack Snyder uh, tweeted out. And for those of you who know, you know exactly what I'm saying. It it was not just, uh, it, it, this was not for a Batman movie, the picture that he tweeted out. This was for the second installment of Man of Steel. And so the picture that he tweeted out, nonetheless, was the new Batman suit, Batmobile. That was that whole conversation. I just wanted to clear that up um, because I didn't really, you know, touch on that um, to make it clear that this was not just a Batman movie, but this is clearly a Superman installment. Batman's in it, nonetheless. But that's old news. This is, you know, just for the viewers who don't know. Um, so moving on, we're going on to comics. I want to talk about The Amazing Spider-Man, as I said before. Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. And looking into the comic world, we have The Amazing Spider-Man. Number so one. So for those who don't know, in Amazing Spider-Man, number uh, 700, Peter Parker dies. Dr. Octavius takes over his body, but there's still a piece of Peter Parker's consciousness that still remains. And so from that point on... We had the superior Spider-Man, which was Dr. Otto Octavius living inside of Peter Parker's body, you know, and actually became a, a better Spider-Man. He, you know, uh, made his own company, Parker Industries, 
better suits, better equipment, all this stuff. And now we have this new issue, okay? This amazing Spider-Man. Peter Parker is back from the dead. And so he regained consciousness. In this story, we see that, um, you know, Peter Parker, he comes back. You know, Otto is no more. He's gone. Um, but now that Peter's back, he's got his body back. He's got his powers back. He's Spider-Man again. And now he he relationships with changes. family, friends, MJ, all these different things have been altered since Peter Parker has been consciously absent. And so, you know, I actually... I really do like this take. I feel like there's been a lot of controversy where some were like, you know, Peter Parker was better off not being in the suit and Dr. Otto Octavius, you know, really did kind of spice up the, the, you know, this genre in a sense. But, you know, I really like this twist. I mean, you, you can't kill off an iconic character such as Peter Parker forever. I mean, come on, we kind of knew that. But nonetheless, he's back. And I'm excited to see, you know, how is he going to adapt to this new world and you know, all these changes. Um, and what does this mean for Peter Parker? Will he still be the same guy or will he alterly, you know, be changed due to, you know, the circumstances of his new life? Thank you guys for tuning in today um, where we talk about music, comics, movies, TV, and much more. Stay tuned for more KMRS. Thanks.